people can say, okay, wait a minute, have we really ended um, the chemical threat here? Secondarily, what's going to happen? People are already, refugees are going into places like Jordan and Turkey by the thousands. Um, what all of a sudden happens if you have a humanitarian crisis or people going to countries that don't want them? Now, on top of that, Assad has threatened that he will respond if there is any military action against him. And what's the downside now at this point to using more weapons? Um, and then finally, if this thing escalates, if more people get involved, and frankly, if these elements turn out to be as bad as some of the elements that we've turned up in places like Egypt and Libya, that are almost as bad, if not worse, than the dictators perform, then what? I, I just don't see a solution here for the president um, that's going to make everybody happy, first of all, and that he can have confidence will end well. He's got to do something, but whatever he does seems fraught with peril. The bottom line, whatever the president does, you want to assume or you want to make sure that it deters future use uh, by Assad of chemical uh, weapons against his own yeah. people. But, you know, the, the right and Republicans are pushing President Obama, do something, do something now. But you don't want Richard to open Pandora's box and you end up in a situation the U.S. does where there's really no U.S. Uh, interest involved, except for maybe uh, Israel in the, in the region. And then what if, if you get involved and American boots end up on the ground? I, I, I know what the polling shows, but we have Iraq, we have Afghanistan, we have a, a horrible budget here in America. I think Americans are, are very hands-off well, towards our to military that point, action. Andrew, we've had lawmakers here, um, Democrats saying hold off, but... Republicans, too. Uh, we'll get into this in a second, Bryce. If we could, this is uh, Congressman Duncan here, hardly somebody that you would <coughs> call uh, uh, peace, love, and happiness, a uh, bleeding heart here. Congressman uh, Jimmy Duncan uh, said the following, and again, he's a Republican from Tennessee. We don't need to be getting involved in a civil war in Syria. We don't have a vital national interest in. We'll talk about national interest next segment. But he goes on to say, we seemingly are almost in a state of permanent war. I don't think our people want us to be in that state, I don't think we can afford it. You're starting to hear Andrew calls about, um, you know, purse strings, and you're starting to hear people talk about national interests, and you can't use the usual suspects here. The hawks and the doves, they're on both sides of the aisle. Th this is one of those areas where I think the president probably isn't going to pay that much attention to internal polls or domestic polls, because the, the motivation isn't what the American public thinks. It's what he thinks is necessary to resolve the problem. Dominic mentioned stopping Assad from using chemical weapons going forward, but there's another factor. Uh, chemical weapons are a weapon of mass destruction. And considering all the rhetoric that we've had against Iran and North Korea and other, you know, states that are looking for nuclear weapons, there has to be an action that deters them from seeking those weapons of mass destruction as well. If, if the response is too small against Syria, that provides an incentive for an Iran or for a North yeah. Korea to pursue nuclear weapons. Everybody's watching that's what a, his next move and, is. And that is in America's national interest. You know what interest. drives me nuts, though, is you read the Times editorial today, and, and they said basically what other people have said. And I love Richard Brodsky. He was a guest on the program. But, well, we can't move until we know what the consequence is going to be. By definition, that's an impossible standard in a war. You don't know what will happen. And the president's the one guy who doesn't have the option to say, well, until I get more here, I can't really do anything. He has to act, and the world is looking at him to take action. But short of knowing what the outcome is going to be... But you be, can't know we, that. We certainly can, we can at least establish what our goal is in all of this. If the goal is not regime change, because we're terrified of what might replace Assad. If the attack on Syria is too severe, it might tip the balance towards the rebels and topple the Assad regime anyway, and then you wind up with a regime change that we don't particularly want. And Brandon, want. that's where it all comes down to, which for me is, what is the end game? They already telegraphed it, that we don't want uh, basically to, to have another Iraq or Afghanistan, we're going to select the, didn't work out too well, okay? Exactly. And we also look what happened in Egypt and say, careful what you wish for, Morsi was a hot mess, we don't want to go through that all over again. But they got to do something. It's the most bizarre, you know, spot you're in. They don't want to do too much, as Andrew says, to tip the balance so that they're seen as picking a winner. But they can't do too little because everyone's going to say, what was the point? Well, you know, Richard, I, I think it's interesting. I actually agree with Dominic in that uh, the president has to be very careful Elizabeth, that he I'm doesn't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and the first time, the first time. The president has to be very careful that he doesn't bite off too much uh, than he can actually afford to chew. Um, I think we've got a couple of issues. We've got the fact that uh, if we strike, 
then we're striking on top of them striking their own people. Now, what type of message does that send to the Middle East, especially now when we are not in control of Libya, Egypt, uh, and other, other nations in the, in the Middle East? I think that's the one issue. The second issue, talking about other surrounding uh, prospective enemies, is Russia. Russia is a major ally of Syria, and I think we don't want to ignite uh, Russia or North Korea at a time like this when our budget nationally uh, is something that we can't afford to, to, to put troops on the ground. Listen to saying. Every point you make I think is legitimate, but if we put ourselves in a position here where people call our bluff one too many times, what is the message to the rest of these other Middle Eastern despots? You call the U.S.'s bluff, and we're afraid of Russia at this point? We're afraid of, I mean, I grant you our options, mm -hmm. while we have a bunch of them, none of them are great. Sitting here and doing nothing when we said we won't tolerate human genocide and it's played out in living technicolor and then we say never mind? It's not that we don't do anything, but I think when you're talking about striking or, I mean, you know, the airstrikes I think is probably the best solution at this point. Um, but we have to do something. I think the president needs to speak on it. Uh, I don't think the president has been as vocal in, ter in terms of sound talking big on the issue. But when you're talking about putting troops on the ground or, or even airstrikes, I don't think that's, I happen, think but, that's, that's but taking a little too far. But you hear the McCain's of the world saying, and I don't want to hear some little strikes right. from the air. We need to have meaningful action. Uh, it, it's, you need a scorecard to keep in track of, of who's for what now. And no matter what, as I said before, threading the needle for this president with mm -hmm. some action that's both meaningful but yet not too much. Exactly. My gosh. All right. Um, we are going to jump to a break. But I want to remind everybody, as always, you're part of our conversation here. So head online. Go to Facebook and Twitter and sound off. What do you think? You saw the poll numbers here, but as the facts unfold, is your opinion changing? Should the U.S. get involved in Syria? And when do we know that it is time to intervene for the sake of humanitarianism? We're going to talk about that after this break here, about what is our line as a nation here. We're the last superpower in the world. When do we say, no, this is our fight? We'll get into that after this.